Pittsburgh celebrating the dedication of these monuments to the founding principles of our country. I, thank you very much. I call this Founders Corner. And I'm hoping it's here for many years because I think if America remembers these eight principles that are blazed in gold on the top of these monuments, that we're going to return to peace and prosperity and America will yet again be the greatest nation on the planet. Yeah. And what are those eight principles we have here today? Well, these are basic principles that we should never forget. Our rights are natural, natural rights. They come from God. They come from nature, as was stated by Thomas Jefferson in the Declaration of Independence, and nature's God. He said our Creator endowed us with our inalienable rights. That means rights that cannot be separated from our bodies, from our persons. Life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. Those rights are given to us naturally with our first breath. And that is the most important principle, our natural rights. And equally to it, I would say, is individual liberty is another of the eight founding principles of our country. And that's emblazoned here with quotes from Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, from John Locke, from George Washington, from Thomas Jefferson. And we remember that from those rights, natural rights and our individual liberty, that people create a limited government that governs with the consent of the people. And that's why we have on top of the monuments limited government and consent to the governed. And we have our U.S. Constitution preamble. The basic things in the preamble that our government is designed to protect. And we have the quotes that talk about that our government cannot work without the consent of the governed. When our government runs amok, when they forget who sent them there, when they forget they serve the individuals of our land, then they no longer are governing with our consent. So we must remember consent. So I want to introduce to you a great leader of Pinellas County. Uh, Barb Hazelden uh, is, is managing, uh, with, together with her fellow compatriots, the South Pinellas Patriots Organization, and she's going to speak to us about freedom today. Is Barb Hazelden nearby? Barb, why don't you come on up? Now, I want to apologize for having you so far away. Uh, I haven't gotten electricity out here yet, so that's about as far away as I could get from our electrical powers and keep the fans running, and I know you wanted to have some fans on a hot day like today. So uh, I can't thank Barb enough for all the great work. She just held a, a forum with four candidates running for U.S. Senate. She filled and all the people who helped her put it together, I know she appreciates. It was an amazing event, and that's what we need. Let's learn who's going to run for office. Thank you, Barb Hazelden. Here you go. Thank you, David. Uh, I do want to recognize the people who helped with the forum last week. A lot of them are standing here. And if you just hold your hands up, because these people are uh, unbelievable, tireless, talented, and true patriots. Uh, and I did want to mention that the videos were just put up this morning, so if you didn't get a chance to go to the event last Sunday, the videos are up on our site, uh, thanks to uh, Pete Franco and uh, Solly and uh, Ernie. And so you can go to the site and you can see those. And, of course, we can't start without thanking David and Ann for the contribution that they've made. I have to, of course, echo the sentiments of Karina. My office is right down the street, and I'm going to have the honor of driving by this location uh, as I do every day. And and uh, now to see this this building monument that I know will develop uh, over the years, that we're going to see more and more improvements to this corner. And there, of course, the financial contribution, you know, we don't even have to mention that. It's the, it's the emotional contribution that David and Ann have made uh, in, in the thought that they have put into these beautiful monuments. I was down here the other night and looked at them and it brings you to tears. It's such a wonderful thing and I'd like to, again, let's have another round of applause for them. Be good. It's, it's a wonderful gift. And, you know, he erected these founding principles as a granite reminder to our community, literally etched in stone, that which is etched in the hearts of those that stand here today. We represent the good people who are trying their best to save this country. And you know we stand at the edge of the end of the world, possibly as we know it in a new world. And we stand at the edge of the world that we have known 
and we're dangerously close. We see other countries, other states, in fact, going over the edge. I saw today, I'm sure a lot of you saw the problems in Minnesota and, of course, Greece and all the different places and our elected officials were all trying very desperately to, to keep uh, on firm footing here. But as the Tea Party movement, we sound the alarm to those that will listen. And we must step past those who will not because, truly, we don't have time to convince people. We attend governmental meetings. I never went to government meetings before. But now we attend government meetings, but a lot of us, as though we have nothing better to do. To better understand what the challenges are that our community faces. We talk to our elected officials. Some are listening. Some laugh. We must step past those who will not listen. Consider a story that I saw on television a few years ago about the San Francisco Sourdough Bread Company of all things. And it's a wonderful story of a company that's 100 years old that came over here from Europe, uh, an immigrant family. They settled in San Francisco and their, their trade in Europe was sourdough bread. And they brought with them a ball of dough. And it's called the mother dough. And do you know that every single day to this very day, that in San Francisco for sourdough bread, that they start with a dough from the day before? That that's how they start the dough? And then in 1910, I believe it was, that the bread company caught fire and the wife ran to the factory, this is a true story folks, and got the dough and it burned to the ground and she had the dough and that's how they restarted that company and today that company supplies sourdough bread for all, all of California, every single dough and it's still from that remnant. And time after time throughout the Bible as societies rise and crumble due to the same human frailties that we face today there is always a remnant of righteous people, a remnant of the original principles and values, the ones that remember. This time, this is us. Imagine, with everything that we know about the evil and decadence today that is trying to take control, imagine this didn't happen now no, imagine that this happened 15 years from now and add 15 years to your age. Everyone here, just take a moment and add 15 years to your age and think how effective we might be as a force throughout the country if all of us were 15 years older. This country would be lost because we're it. And it's only a nanosecond, a nanosecond, in time between America and the edge and God is with us and it's an honor to serve with all of you thank you